Natalia Yareska. Natalia will be talking about the changes to the state budget of Ukraine for 2015. Thank you. Good afternoon. The issue of protection of the territories, just as before, was the priority in the agenda of our country that requires from us financial mobilization, mobilization of all our financial and economic resources, not just to counteract the aggression, but to stabilize our economy and banking system. And what is also important to implement, very important and very uh, uh, timely reforms, of urgent reforms in the economy of Ukraine. Fine. Uh, the necessary condition of that mobilization is our support uh, by the IMF and our other uh, bilateral and multilateral partners, which you know. Uh, their uh, provision of assistance is uh, also conditioned uh, uh, according to the cooperation with the IMF. Uh, the government, after tense negotiations, has finally achieved the agreement with the IMF on providing to Ukraine the new four-year program. The loan uh, within the EFF. Uh, I have no place even to put my hand somewhere because of your microphone. The program of reforms, which is supported by the IMF, is the program of Ukrainian reforms. And this program will allow us to stabilize the economy in the current year. But the most important it is to put foundation for the restoration of growth in 2016. The government of Ukraine during the month has done a lot of work and agreed with the IMF on a new agreement on the conditions which are good for Ukraine. But it's not enough just to come to agreement with the IMF. It is important for the board of directors to support it, which will be considering the issue of providing new loan to Ukraine after the preliminary measures have been done. And only after that we'll be able to receive the access to financing from the fund. And this will open up our access to getting the bilateral and multilateral support package. What is needed for the board of IMF to approve this support. We need to show how serious we are in reforming economy and fighting with the uh, main structural problems. One of that benchmarks is the changes to the state budget, which were developed by the government, which today will be submitted to the parliament. As the government has done its part of the work now, the ball is uh, in the hands of our partners in coalition. We are sure that our partners, same way, just like we will be working <coughs> on that and will do it as soon as possible. I would like to inform you about the main features of the legislative changes uh, which we submitted to the MP so that you understand uh, what changes and why are we uh, proposing them and how they will change the life of our citizens this year. Have you received the tables? Uh, can we? Uh, it's better to uh, distribute these tables now. First of all, we suggest to enhance the uh, revenues and budgets to the state budget to 22 and 35 billion grivnas. The increase of the forecast uh, indicators uh, uh, re are required by inflation and devaluation. The increase of the expenditures is caused by two key problems. The first one, to increase the direct subsidies for gas and communal services for population. Second, to increase the assistance to our citizens. Uh, who uh, had to leave the uh, zone of ATO. Today we have approximately one million of such citizens. And the third is to increase the uh, expenditures to service the state uh, debt because of the valuation of Grivna. To be able to finance all these three directions, we will increase the uh, state budget deficit from 3.7% to 4.1%. I would like to also mention two more other mm, uh, uh, things. Uh, thanks to the amendment suggest the government for the first time will start fighting the main illnesses of the 
uh, Ukrainian economy and inefficiency of the energy sector, which leads to the deficit of the Naknafta gas and the deficit of the pension fund. Thanks to these measures, the financing of Naknafta gas will be reduced from the budget from 31.1 billion to 29.7 million grivnas by 5.8 percent. That is not a lot, but this is the first step. And please keep in mind that all the previous years we were increasing this funding. Last year, the government directed to the needs of the Nafta gas about 110 billion grivnas. This step, uh, we certify that we are planning to uh, change the system uh, to make it more transparent and to provide assistance from the state budget from the pocket of every taxpayer only to those who really require that assistance and who efficiently uses, um, and this way we'll be efficiently using the public money. We hope that the parliamentary coalition will support the uh, draft laws that we suggest, and this will open up to Ukraine the way to this credit. But we also emphasize that if the MPs do not support the changes, then they will deprive our country of this so important financial support. I believe that at that I would like to give you the opportunity to ask questions. Please do not forget introduce yourself. Uh, could you please uh, inform us about the forecast exchange rate for Hrivna? We uh, uh, forecasted at the 21.5, uh, 21.7, taking into account that you uh, provided 12.5 uh, billion revenue for um, to compensate uh, the utility services, and uh, uh, that is, you know, the tariffs, uh, the average figure. Uh, for uh, for g uh, tariffs, electricity and gas. Uh, I do not have these uh, figures. The uh, National uh, Committee on the Electricity, NERC, has to uh, step in and uh, set the tariffs. And uh, uh, I believe that next week, Maybe in two weeks, the Minister of Social Policy will uh, do their part, and uh, uh, they will sp specify the information how how many people uh, should be provided with this support from the government, and then we will raise tariffs. Whether you have provided in the budget uh, uh, payments um, on Russian loans, uh, 3 billion USD, we, this will be done when we will implement uh, um, this preliminary conditions and the uh, IMF board will uh, approve this very program and then we will start negotiations with all our uh, creditors and uh, uh, then we will... Uh, the, uh, corruption has been a huge problem for the Ukrainian uh, economy and many allegedly corrupt authorities judges, uh, other officials are still in the system. What's the government going to do to try to take away these officials from your system? <clears throat> the government has a broad and sweeping anti-corruption program, uh, which has begun in, in honesty already in the year 2014. I mentioned earlier uh, the work that we're doing with our state oil and gas company, Naknaftohaz, a very specific measure there that has eliminated corruption. We have eliminated all the intermediaries in the trade in our import of gas, both from Russia as well as from uh, Europe, where we are now uh, importing through reverse. But aside from very specific measures like that, we have also, as you probably are aware, introduced and, and adopted all of the legislation necessary for an anti-corruption bureau, which is a new law enforcement agency with specialized powers 
with the specialized authority to prosecute, and an anti-corruption agency which will work on the policies necessary to change the environment in which we're living. But anti-corruption is something we do in our everyday work, aside from the agency and the bureau that have been adopted, that have been created. Uh, the, the president has introduced and the parliament is in the process of adopting a new judicial reform. The judicial reform sees uh, improved access to the courts, improved uh, choices in terms of selection of judges, inclu includes additional transparency in, in the financial backgrounds of judges, and probably even more importantly than that, the president has introduced legislation and proposed removing the immunity of both par parliament deputies and uh, limiting the immunity of judges. So there's a very broad anti-corruption campaign ongoing. Uh, you've probably seen several people have been arrested and, and claims made against them just in the past few days by the prosecutor's office. It is one of the um, major structural reforms that this country is undergoing today. How long do you think it's going to take until Ukraine can see like a real, real difference in the courts? Do you suspect this is going to take five years, ten years to get to a Western standard of a relatively um, free economy, uh, an economy free of such corruption? I really don't have an estimate for you, and I'm not an expert on judicial reform. All I can tell you is we'll do everything to move it as quickly as possible. Part of it can be done right now legislatively. legislatively. Another part of it has to be done through constitutional reform, which will be later in the year. My hope is that it moves as quickly as is humanly possible. Could you please tell, uh, as to the tax reform, what novelties could business expect and the taxpayers, and what about the fiscal service? The reforms that we'll be submitting this week, which are connected to budgetary changes, there are not many of them. First, that is change of the rent uh, 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 for our Dobovanya from 20% to 70%. That is increase of rent, uh, and uh, we believe the increase of prices for gas, Ukrgas uh, Vodobovanya will give us the chance to finance all these uh, subsidies that I was talking about. You see, 12 and a half billion subsidies are uh, planned additionally to the budget, uh, uh, plus to what was planned uh, um, in the budget, which was passed in December 2014. Uh, with the increase of rent uh, for Ukrahazvodobovanya and the Ukrainian producers, gas producers, gas and oil producers. Uh, uh, you see in the table that will uh, give additional de 9 billion to the budget. Besides that, we have an intention to uh, increase change uh, into humanitarian assistance, I mean specifically that the humanitarian assistance which is received from specific international organizations, international institutions uh, to registered IDPs, uh, yeah, IDPs, yeah, permission uh, IDPs, uh, uh, sorry and those which will receive assistance directly from these international organizations will not be uh, taxed. Uh, these are the specific tax uh, changes that we introduced this week and in the future. The next step will be review of our whole system of rent, uh, talking about gas and oil producing production. I mean that in the end of the previous year we continued uh, and the existing systems of rent, and now we'll be working together with all the stakeholders, I mean investors, existing investors, those who want to invest into Ukraine to find the uh, size of the rent, which will give what the budget needs, but at the same time will encourage investors to come to the sector of Ukrainian economy, because we all understand and we want investments to be made into oil and gas production in Ukraine so that we reduce our energy dependence on other third countries and so that we have more of our own production. As to fiscal service, it can uh, not uh, operate efficiently as to me because I'm responsible for the budget. I want them to be more and more efficient, but uh, 
in our memorandum with IMF, we have the program of reforms and the program of the actions of the government, just like it is in the strategy 2020, to implement a very strong reform in administration on taxes and on the and customs, uh, cust uh, and I believe that the state fiscal service can become much more. Uh, First, please. what GDP contraction do you see for the year? What what it's uh, going to be in the budget? And the other thing, uh, he uh, so in, in this IMF broad IMF forty billion package, we see that some part of it will come from debt restructuring, right? So, and we've seen some over the last week, we've seen some estimates. Uh, International Institute for Finance says that at least 13 billion has, has to come from debt restructuring. Do you agree with that number, 13 billion? Uh, and maybe you could provide some uh, more details about that number. Uh, with regard to the first question, in the budget we have nominal uh, GDP and the nominal GDP actually increases slightly because of the combination of devaluation of the local currency and inflation. Uh, in terms of real GDP, uh, the, the, uh, the forecast is for a real GDP decrease of 5.5% if I remember correctly. But that's not a relevant number per se in the, in the uh, nominal GDP calculation in the budget. With regard to the debt operations, yes, it is our expectation that the debt operations will produce over the period of the program, meaning over the course of four years, uh, 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 up to $15 billion. Uh, dollars. And that is how uh, you come to the number that Madame Lagarde uh, discussed when she had her press conference in Brussels last week of a $40 billion package. That $40 billion package includes up to $15 billion from debt operations. Just a quick follow-up. Does it include Russian bail bond? Uh, we don't. We, we haven't gotten so far as to discuss specifically where it will come from. Our intention, again, is to begin these debt consultations with all of our creditors, uh, notwithstanding not discriminating one nationality from another. Thank you. Terke Ukraine. Uh, Ukraine, Ukraine Channel. I have a question. Maybe you can approximately at least give us the figures of when can we expect the first tranche uh, from IMF, how much will be given to us, and for how uh, long will the first tranche be uh, sufficient for Ukraine? It all depends on us. I can tell you that first we need to um, implement the changes to the budget, the changes to the tax uh, law, and uh, uh, we need additional legislation on so-called affiliated parties uh, in the banking sector and some uh, related to anti-corruption bureau that uh, all has to be approved by the parliament. That is uh, first. And then only after that they can uh, have the meeting of their board to give uh, uh, to approve or disapprove our program. And I, of course, expect only the positive uh, uh, decision from IMF. I would like to see that after these uh, uh, draft laws are submitted this year, this week, we will see uh, uh, the actions of our partners in the parliament so that these uh, amendments are approved by the end of uh, February and from the first week of March. We can expect to have a decision from IMF which will give us the chance for the first tranche. We have not discussed what would be the amount of the first tranche. The government, the position of the government is uh, to request uh, to convince them that uh, part of that loan which has to come to us in 2015 should be as big as possible. Talking about statistics, experience of the IMF with other programs, this amount could be up to 60% of the total amount, 60% out of 17.5 billion, which is approximately 10.8 billion. More than that, that's not the first tranche. That the first year it cannot happen in the first year. They don't have such approach. Will we get 60? Do we get the 50%? It's not decided. Out of how much we get in the first tranche, we have not discussed it. 
how long will this uh, for how long will it be enough it's not the issue whether this will be enough or not why does the government request to give us now as much as possible because this way we are restoring our reserves in the national bank of ukraine this way we convince uh, all the markets, domestic and foreign, that our situation, our financial situation has stabilized. The amount should be significant. It should be uh, uh, sufficient for the market. It doesn't matter whether that's four or five. It should be significant. It's more psychological issue than arithmetic. Bloomberg. Agency, my question, there are grounds to believe that Russian side will not agree to the conditions of restructuring which Ukrainian side will propose. What arguments will you be using in this discussion to convince Russia? Maybe you'll be using uh, uh, IMF or some other countries as uh, 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 to help in the process. I have no question, answer to your questions. We have not started consultations. We have not uh, talked specifically with any one of the creditors. We'll start that in the end of the first week in March. But now, after the decision of IMF that they will support us and all the parameters will be understood and clear, then we will start listening to our creditors and we'll tell them what our understanding is, how we can work uh, mutually so that they and our interests are involved to improve the Ukrainian situation and the improvement of Ukrainian situation, including the situation with the creditors. Two more questions. Uh, independent news agency. Do I understand you correctly that you and the government expect that uh, the parliament uh, and, uh, will uh, pass these amendments to the budget? When do you expect it? Maybe the MPs need more time to, to learn, to, to, to examine. I suggested the changes that we are implementing. Uh, there, are, there are not many big and serious changes. The biggest change is additional subsidies for population. Second is uh, additional uh, subsidies for IDPs. Third, changes to the revenue part. Uh, uh, and I don't think that is too complicated a process and too complicated issues. I've given you three pages, and that's everything there is there. We, uh, there, we don't have a big field of movement with the budget. We don't have how to finance more than what we have, than what you see. And this way, I believe, we'll have enough time, our coalition partners, have understood it already because we talked to them about that before on memorandum and our negotiations with IMF. They, uh, we kept them informed. I invited to the Ministry of Finance all the uh, representatives of the coalition to uh, look at the memorandum. It was the preliminary form. Uh, they all looked at it. They all understand and they know what uh, needs to be done as first steps. I do hope that. Uh, the last week, I don't know when exactly we need to address the uh, Speaker of the Parliament when this special session could be can, uh, held, but I believe it will be next week, starting from the 23rd of February. Five more questions. Could I just ask you for a very uh, abbreviated uh, summary of your opening remarks in English for the foreign uh, broadcasters here? Uh, and uh, secondly, um, would you interpret the relative modesty of the IMF package, which falls a little bit short of, or quite a bit short, in fact, of uh, the figure that um, the Prime Minister had mentioned as a sign of lack of confidence uh, in Ukraine's reform program? I'll answer the second question first. I think it's the exact opposite. It's, the, it's exactly the amount that the Prime Minister discussed. So it's 17 and a half of a 25 or more billion dollars of bilateral and multilateral support, which together with the $15 billion that we hope 
to uh, achieve through our debt operations adds up to the $40 billion package announced by Madame Lagarde. We are not disappointed. We are very uh, grateful and very happy to have the support of the IMF and our bilateral and multilateral partners. Um, this is the beginning of a process. It's the beginning of a four-year program. So I, I've, I've said this in previous press conferences, but the $17.5 billion is over four years. The bilateral assistance is often one or one and a half years. So the United States has announced $2 billion uh, over this year. There will be additional sums of money that, that will be raised over the next few years as we continue down this report, reform path. And I'm, I'm confident that this is the beginning of a very, very uh, supportive package and a supportive relationship, an ongoing supportive relationship with our international partners. So I don't, I, there's no disappointment on my part. In terms of a quick summary in English, let me see. Um, I, I started by saying, as everyone is fully aware, that um, the, uh, the the, the question of national defense of our territory is number one. And in this regard, financial mobilization is equally, if not more important, than any other mobilization. Financial mobilization, in this case, begins with stabilizing our economy. Stabilizing our economy, stabilizing our financial and banking systems. The first step towards that are our reforms, our reform program, which is the base of an IMF program. The IMF has agreed to our uh, re reform program, not we to theirs. And that's a very important point for uh, Ukraine and Ukrainians. This IMF program, the 17.5 billion, opens the doors for us to the additional bilateral and multilateral support that I just mentioned. So it's a key element and it's a key step. Uh, from the Ukrainian side, the next key step is our so-called prior actions. The prior actions that, are, that, that we need to take before the board of the IMF can formally approve any program. The prior actions are primarily adoption of these budget changes, which I've outlined today, adoption of the uh, legislative changes that are a part and parcel of that budget uh, change, and then in addition to that, several legislative changes in the area of improving the Anti-Corruption Bureau, as well as moving forward on related party lending issues in the banking system. All of these things will be, if they haven't already been uh, sent to our parliament this week, and we're very hopeful that our coalition partners will be equally supportive and equally efficient in their review of and hopefully support of these changes so that the week of the 23rd of February, we can have a parliament session to review these and then move on hopefully to an IMF board meeting at the end of February, first week of March, which would open then the first tranche. In terms of the changes that are critical in the budget, <clears throat> the most critical changes are uh, on the revenue side, an increase in the royalty for our Ukrainian domestic extraction industries and gas, in particular from 20 to 70 percent. That royalty has been increased so that we can pay for the subsidies which we've increased, which are related to an expected increase in energy tariffs for the households. Um, the revenue side is a $9 billion increase in revenues. The subsidy side is a $12.5 billion of additional subsidies for, for the population most needing support. Um, the, uh, the other changes to the budget uh, that are incredibly important are an increase in our support for internally displaced persons. We have now over 1 million people who've registered or are in the process of registering as IDPs. There's an additional 2.9 billion hryvnia in the budget for them. And then finally, there is a uh, important, uh, important increase in uh, different costs that come from the change in the uh, the, the devaluation of our currency and inflation. There are other smaller items here as well, which I've listed for everyone. There are small uh, sums which are uh, amendments to the budget. I give you transparently all the changes. The larger of them. I think that um, what's important is that this is the beginning of these struc the structural reforms that the country has needed and is in need of today, uh, not for the IMF, but for the country. And so on that basis, we're hopeful that the parliament will move quickly and efficiently to support us so that we can move on from stabilization to starting to build the building blocks for growth in 2016. Zig uh, TV channel, could you please tell the idea of the government on nationalization of the deposits of citizens. Is it something which is being discussed or will uh, people, uh, it's not on time, we are not reviewing it. 
the Ministry of Finance uh, website says that this idea is not uh, a live idea and will not live. Channel 5, uh, Game of Interest program. One of the sources of the revenues to the budget is the legalization of the um, uh, sphere of um, the lottery activities and uh, other types of activities. Will you review this or will there be any changes introduced into the system of taxation? You probably uh, remember that in December when I first became the Minister of uh, Finance, we decided to change the legislation related to gambling. But that uh, at that period of time, we failed to introduce these amendments. We have not changed that. We have not introduced any amendments. We still have the existing system. And we have not introduced any new efficient uh, amendments to that. The Ministry of Finance is working on that. There are many stakeholders uh, in the parliament, the investors, social organizations who want to get some support. Uh, uh, by uh, 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 support the revenues which would be coming from lotteries, for example, and I believe that by the end of the month we will finalize that. But we are balancing all different interests, all different uh, experiences of uh, different countries, and we have not uh, uh, received one option that we could submit submit to the government. Uh, uh a small question about additional uh, taxes on import uh, between 5 and 10 percent, whether you plan to uh, put this into force from March or April. Uh, we have made this decision in the government meeting today, and it will uh, come to force in several days when we finalize uh, the uh, mm, lists about critical importers. Uh, there are some uh, exclusions as to um, some uh, medical uh, uh, goods, uh, uh, some medicines, and some energy goods. The lists are not developed yet. They will be finalized in some days. Could you introduce yourself? I'm Asenka Alexandra Forbes, Ukraine. Um, in order to get uh, uh, your uh, uh, profit from the National Bank, uh, the, it, you should get the results of the audit first, whether um, you are uh, planning to have a restructuring of your debts. The budget which was passed in December, the redistribution of the NBU uh, uh, Profit was uh, um, di uh, distributed at the level of 65 percent. Here in this table, you see the decrease by four point something, 4.5 billion. Um, the entire amount will be transferred only upon the audit which is scheduled for April. That is, uh, National Bank uh, will get uh, its uh, uh, benefits uh, partially as provided by legislation. And uh, in March, uh, uh, the profiling of uh, 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 state bonds was uh, planned, and uh, we have changed uh, this figure to um, we expected to have savings from profiling, and we do not uh, um, expect to have them, which added plus something to our expenses. Uh, uh, could you uh, please uh, make a prediction about about uh, the tariffs on transportation in the key of uh, um, public transport. And the second question, uh, uh, do you think the sums uh, allocated for maintenance of uh, central executive bodies like Verkhovna Rada, like uh, some ministries, uh, aren't they exaggerated? As for the uh, 
privileges provided for transportation. Um, I am not sure about some specific amounts. Uh, uh, it seems to me that privileges will be considerably cut down. Mm, and uh, uh, whether the figure for allocated for uh, Verkhovna Rada uh, Cabinet of Ministers aren't they exaggerated? For the Ministry of Finance, all the expenses seem to be exaggerated. And uh, nevertheless, we are very seriously thinking about cutting down expenses on uh, um, uh, uh, public servants. And uh, uh, last year, we decreased these expenses by 10 percent, and we plan to do this in the future. Olga Visnik from Tax uh, um, uh, Magazine. Uh, could you describe in more detail uh, changes to the taxation system, uh, especially to the single social tax? Uh, yeah, probably you remember that uh, that changes to the single social tax, which was uh, suggested in December, uh, was not suggested by us. Uh, it was suggested by one of the partners of our government. Mm, and unfortunately, all these suggestions did not work sufficiently in January because the criteria for um, these changes were rather um, uh, complicated. And currently, we continue uh, introducing improvements to this system in order to encourage businesses um, uh, to come out from shadow and we believe that all the amendments which were prepared to the um, uh, legislation on a single uh, social tax, we will improve the situation considerably. Um, Victoria Boyga, uh, today the ratings were decreased by uh, Fitch. Whether you expect to see the decreases by other um, agencies, the reason is that investors are disappointed with the, the amounts granted to Ukraine by IMF and how uh, further decreases in the international uh, be, uh, ratings will um, influence your further negotiations with the IMF. Uh, um, I believe the, these were a, a variety, a combination of criteria which were taken into account when uh, uh, decreasing Ukraine, uh, the ratings of Ukraine. And I think that our negotiations with the IMF uh, were not the reason. I do not know what to expect from other rating agencies. And our negotiations with the IMF are not based on uh, uh, those ratings. I am. Mm, Ratings are important when you go to the international market, and this will be important for the new uh, creditors, not for the old ones. Thank you very much. Our tomorrow's work will start at night.